was watching your special Stand Up for Drummers, yeah, which is great. But in that special, you talk about uh, a letter that you wrote to John Waters. Yeah. And I was really moved by that because, like I said at the top of the show, I think in our generation, there weren't clear defined paths for how you find mentors or get support or learn how to have an artistic career. Yeah. And you sort of wrote this weird letter to John Waters. I wonder if you could just tell me that story. So when I was in uh, junior high school, yeah. I don't know what was going on in my head, but we had this assignment that was like, what would you do if it was the last day on earth? This is eighth grade, I think. Okay. And I remember classmates just coming up with really boring, just awful things that they would do, you know, visit their family and stuff like that. I'm like, last day on earth. And I just, I don't know if I was trying to be funny or what, but I wrote that, oh, if it was my last day alive, I'd go down to the main street of Valley Stream, New York, where I grew up, and I'd just destroy everything. I'd <laughs> smash in windows, light stores on fire. I thought it was great. And then I didn't get a grade on it. I, the teacher was like, you see me after class. And she had a, this talk with me and then sent me to the school psychologist. And so I felt immediately like I was in trouble, but not even for you know, graffiti. I, I felt like I was in trouble. You know, My mom was worried. I had to spend a day with the school psychologist. And at the time, uh, I started discovering, and this is a reason to do interviews, by the way. It's because I heard an interview on the radio with John Waters. Him and Divine, I don't know what they were promoting, but he was talking about, you know, shock value and being shocking and grossing people out and, uh, you know, his taste. You know what sure. John Waters yeah. Like, Who's this guy? He's into violence. I think he used to blow up his model airplanes or something. Something I was like, this guy, whoever this is, I want, I want to be like this person. And I bought his book, Shock Value. That was like my, I never read anything. And I read this like the Bible. It, the book opens up with this. Is, if someone uh, pukes at one of my screenings, I consider it a standing ovation. Not that I'm into grossing people out, but more that shock, you know? Right. Weirdo. I was like, this guy, this, he has a book and he's a weirdo. It just, it was, as a, when you're a teenager, you just don't know who, who to be. And did you sort of think, I'm sort of a weirdo, and... Yeah. I thought, I'm kind of a weirdo, but what, where does the, what happens with this? And being the drama of being sent to the school psychologist, the reason it's dramatic is because I was taken from my friends, right? So it wasn't cool, like, detention. It was like, no, this is, you know, something's wrong deep in your head. So I had to take these tests. Oh, really? Oh, my God. So they, they were legitimately feel, concerned that they might have a psychopath in their yeah. hands. And I still, you know, I still back up my paper. I was like, come on, this is cool. Visit your grandmother. <laughs> <laughs> you got one day her. left. You Go nuts. <laughs> um, steal an airplane. Steal and absolutely <laughs> steal an airplane. I should have written that. <laughs> Boy, my imagination was limited that I just kept it to Valley Stream. I should have went, gone right to JFK and stolen an airplane. Because <laughs> I, I don't feel like there was something wrong with me. I was like, I was just trying to be funny. You know? Right. And I wrote to John Waters. I told him what was going on with me. I got sent to the school psychologist. Why do you get to write books and travel Europe and make these movies? And he wrote back and he gave me advice. He said, don't just be... Shocking just to be shocking, try to be funny, try to have some individuality and just try to express yourself. And he saved my life in that he took me seriously and that he gave me a way out. He gave me like, you can do this. You can be, you, these, are, these things can happen to you. And they did. He was sort of like a mentor from afar in a way. Yes. And he wrote, we wrote, became pen pals. So, really? Oh yeah. So you sort of accidentally stumbled into somebody that took the time to, to tell you that you weren't a freak. Or better than that, you can be a freak and this is how to, how to do it. You can make a living being like that. You can be, be an artist. You really put a lot of weight in the impact of that relationship? Uh, oh, uh, yes. I, I, can't, I can't emphasize enough what, what that does to a person. When, when you're young and you don't know what, what you are, 
what do you call, even call this kind of, I hate to use the word artist again, but what do you call this? What is this? And for someone who, the guy who wrote the book, you know, and made these films, to reach out, it really was like, it was like a, a, a life raft because then I was able to go, okay, there's some beacon of where I can go from here. Hey folks, thanks for watching. If you like what you just saw, then why not subscribe? Click right here for lots more off camera. And if you want to see the hour long version of these conversations, I'm going to give you the secret link. Here it is, offcamera.com. Check it out.